Okay, so now let's uh, uh, continue with the functional principle component analysis. So uh, on Monday, uh, we have talked about uh, uh, how to uh, find out the principal component analysis uh, based on the eigen decomposition, right? And we have learned that uh, uh, so how to interpret the princ functional principal components. Um, So the basic idea is that uh, uh, we will represent the uh, center the curve by linear combination of the basic functions, and then the uh, the variant covariance functions uh, will can also be written as uh, these uh, uh, basic functions, and then we can try to solve these eigen equations, and uh, so but we have these conditions that. Uh, uh, this uh, length of the FPC WT had to be equal to one. Um, so, uh, so then we plug in uh, this uh, uh, basic function representation to this uh, eigen decomposition eigen equations. Uh, so here, this is not to maximize. This is try to solve these eigen equations, right? So we plug in the formula. Of sigma s s t and w t as this basis representative representations, <coughs> and then um, we will can derive that uh, we will have this uh, a matrix form in the end, right? And uh, so here we have the constraints that the length of the uh, functional principal component had to be equal to one. So here you may notice that uh, we have this. Uh, uh, w matrix in the middle of this uh, uh, in these conditions. So what we can do is uh, we will define a new vector u equal to uh, w one half times b. So then um, we can retain this w as w one half multiplied by w one half, and uh, we then we multiply. On the left side of this equation, both both sides of this equation, by w one half, so multiply by w one half and w one half on both sides of the equation. Uh, so now you can see here, uh, this w one half times b is just a u, right? So we can replace this w one half times b as a u here, right? And then this w one half is also u, and now this condition. B transpose times W times B will become B transpose times W one half times W one half times B. So then this this condition will become U transpose times U. So there's no matrix between uh between U transpose U now. Uh, so we have this condition. So we try to solve these uh, equations, and we know that in this case here U will be just the eigenvector of the matrix in the front, right? So then we can just uh, um, just uh, uh, try to find the eigen equations, eigen vectors of this matrix, and then we will know u. After we know u, then the b will be just uh, w in w minus one half times u, and then we will get the b, right? B is the uh, vector of coefficients. Um, to the basis function for the uh, WT, the FPC, right? Okay, so this is uh, the ideas um, uh, how we can calculate the functional principal components. Okay, any questions? Is this clear? Okay, so uh, so we can do this. Uh, so then we go uh, one examples for the Canadian weather data. Um, so um, last week we end up with this graph. So basically, uh, this is a very interesting graph from FPC. So as we mentioned uh, uh, at the beginning of FPCA, that FPCA is one tools to um, project the infinite dimension curves of functions 
to this uh, finite sample, some finite uh, dimension space, right? Basically, we transpose this temperature curve to two uh, vec vector of two elements. So the first FPC score and second FPC score. So now for each curve, we can represent uh, this curve by these two numbers, okay? So the x-axis is the FPC score one, and the second y-axis is the FPC score two for these uh, 35 cities. So we know that the first FPC score represented the overall temperature, average temperature, right? And uh, the second FPC represented the, uh, the change between the, the temperature, the change of the temperature between the summer and, uh, and, and the winter. So if you look at this graph here, you will see that, uh, for example, Vancouver and uh, Victoria, they both have a very large um, first LPC score, right? The reason is because they have a, a pretty warm temperature uh, overall, right? And, and uh, for example, like uh, uh, Red Loot has a very negative um, FPC uh, score one, the first FPC score one, because uh, Red Loot has a very, uh, very low temperature overall, right? And also we can look at the, uh, look at the, uh, the, 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 sec the second LPCs, the L second LPC scores, and uh, so you can see here, uh, generally, um, like uh, uh, Dawson or Winnipeg, uh, this uh, um, uh, city in the in, inside the land um, has has a very uh, different in, in, the, in the temperature in the summer and winter. Therefore, they have a large uh, second FPC scores. Okay, so you can see now. With this two-dimensional projection, we are able to we can do in the grouping of the cities, and we can also um, yeah uh, so so this is a, we can also treat these FPC scores as some features uh, we can use for our further analysis. Okay, so this is a, this graph is very important when we do the FPCA. Okay, any questions? Yes. So, um do we have like a density distribution for for a curve? Do we have that kind of notion? Uh, distribution for curves. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is a very, very good uh, um, question. So I guess for these curves, we generally we will think of these curves are the some stochastic process, and uh, so for the stochastic process, uh, they may have, for example. Then some special uh, distribution for the stochastic process like a uh, Gaussian process, right? So for Gaussian process, we will have the mean function mu t, and then we will have the um, covariance function sigma s t. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's uh, um, yeah. So that's not a specific discussion. There's not no specific discussion about the distribution on the curves. Yeah, this is a very good question. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so uh, there's another uh, way to try to interpret FPC, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of uh, used in the FDA textbook, okay, and also uh, in the uh, default um, plot in the FPCA in in R in the R package, uh, this, you will see this graph a lot. Okay, so um, so basically this graph is to show that uh, how um, after adding the FPCs, how 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 it looks like uh, deviate, deviate from the average. So for example here on uh, this graph, the the middle curve, the third line is the average of the temperature, okay? And uh, so Wi of t is the FPC, okay? So the, this is the, for the first FPC. So basically you will add, add plus 
or minus 2 times square root of di times uh, wi of t. So this will basically a constant. I believe here di is the eigen value uh, of, of the when we do the eigen decomposition. Okay. So basically here, if you can see like uh, this, uh, this is uh, looks like a confidence interval, right? But it's not. Okay. Basically, if you look at this uh, interval, if it uh, has a wide interval, it means the wit is bigger, right? Because it's uh, when you have a plus minus, basically the the width of this interval will be four square root of di times wi of t, right? Yes. So you can see like this part has a, a wider interval, and uh, in the summer it will have a narrower interval, right? So basically it means that uh, the first LPC is larger in the winter and uh, smaller in the summer. Yeah. So so um, so that's how you interpret this graph. But uh, personally, I find uh, this is a uh, this is uh, uh, not as direct as just the plot wi of t instead. Okay, so so I personally recommend uh, don't recommend this graph. I recommend just the plot wi of t and to look at how wi t changes with t. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Okay. So here is the summary for the functional principal components. Basically, this is a kind of a functional version of PCA. So PCA is a, a very important tool when we want to summarize or the, do the dimension reduction for um, high dimensional uh, covariates. Okay. So functional PCA basically uh, is try to do the uh, find the major variations among uh, multiple curves or functions. Okay. So. Um, so we have learned uh, um, how to estimate the functional principal component uh, based on the basis function representation. Okay, and you can see uh, in the end uh, we basically we solve eigen, uh, eigen, eigen equations, right? And then we will uh, find the eigen vectors of our matrix, and then we will uh, find the FPC. Okay, yes. So this is the main ideas how to calculate the functional principal component. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So um, so we finished the lectures. Uh, so now let's uh, uh, so let me stop the.